Welcome geometers to the section 7.3 video, which is use similar right triangles. So far we've covered sections 1 and 2, which focused on the Pythagorean theorem and the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. In this video, we are going to calculate missing segment measures in right triangles with altitudes to the hypotenuse. So the, this continues with sections 1 and 2 in that we're only talking about right triangles. But not just any right triangles, right triangles that have altitudes to the hypotenuse. So before we even jump into the notes, I thought we should probably review what is an altitude. So if you rem remember an altitude from first semester, an altitude is a segment from the vertex and it's perpendicular to the opposite side. So just drawing some random triangle, here is an altitude. It starts at the vertex, goes to the opposite side, forming a right angle. So everything that we learned today applies to right triangles with altitudes to the hypotenuse. So if we're going to draw one of those, here is my right triangle. The altitude goes to the hypotenuse. Remember that the hypotenuse is the longest side, it's the side across from the right angle. So here is the altitude to the hypotenuse. So we're going to learn two geometric mean theorems. The first one is called the altitude theorem. So if I have a right triangle with an altitude to the hypotenuse, I'm going to use the altitude theorem. Okay, so remember with the geometric mean, if you were asked to find the geometric mean between 6 and 8, you would put x twice, and that was the geometric mean, and then 6 and 8 would go on the opposing diagonals. Okay, now instead of x, with the altitude theorem, I'm going to use the altitude twice. So that's the geome geometric mean part. The other two uh, parts of this proportion are the first part of the hypotenuse, and then the other part of the hypotenuse. So in our diagram, I'm going to label it. Okay, the altitude in this case is BD, so it gets used twice. One part of the hypotenuse is AB, because remember this is the hypotenuse. And then the other part of the hypotenuse is BC. So that's the altitude theorem. You're always going to start out with the altitude theorem. If you can't use the altitude theorem, you're going to use what's called the leg theorem. So the altitude theorem, it's called the altitude theorem because the altitude is used twice. That's the geometric mean. With the leg theorem, the leg gets used twice. And then it's the entire hypotenuse. And then it's the part of the hypotenuse that's connected to the leg. Okay, and for this we need to remember that a leg is a side of a right triangle that's not the hypotenuse. So in our figure, we have two legs. We have DC, which is one leg, and then we have AD, which is the other leg. So we could set up two different proportions. In the case where I'm using DC as the leg, DC gets used twice. The entire hypotenuse then is AC, and the part of the hypotenuse that's connected to the leg is this little part BC. In the case where AD is the leg that I'm interested in, AD is going to be used twice. The entire hypotenuse is still AC, so it's still the same triangle. And then the part of the hypotenuse that's connected to the leg is this AB here. So the leg theorem is always going to have uh, two different proportions that could be set up. You just need to pick the correct one. I know this is a lot of information, so I think that it's best that we just jump into some examples. Before we do example one, I just want to remind you that these theorems only apply to right triangles with an altitude to the hypotenuse. That's extremely important. Okay, so example one, it says calculate the value of y in the figure below. The first thing that we need to do is determine, is this the altitude theorem or the leg theorem? Well, let's look at which part of the, this triangle is the altitude. QS is the altitude. It comes from vertex to opposite side and it forms a right angle. 
Now, there's no marking on QS at all. So this is not gonna be the altitude theorem. If there were any marking, like there was a number or there was an X or there was a Y, we would use the altitude theorem. In this case, where there's no marking on the altitude, we're gonna use the leg theorem. Okay, so the leg theorem is called the leg theorem because I wanna use the leg twice. Again, there's two legs here, QP and RQ. Obviously, I'm not gonna use QP because there's no marking. So I'm gonna use RQ, which is marked Y. Leg theorem uses the leg twice. Okay, then I need to use the entire hypotenuse, which I can see is nine, and then the part of the hypotenuse which is connected to the leg, which is this little part right here, which is three. Now I'm gonna use cross products. Y multiplied by Y is Y squared. Nine multiplied by three is 27. I don't want a decimal, I want an exact answer. So I'm gonna take the square root. Remember that 27 is nine and three. Nine is three and three. I have a pair of threes and I have a three left over. So my answer becomes three root three. One of the pairs comes outside. This guy stays by himself because he does not have a partner. So y in this case is three root three. Let's look at example two. Okay, again, looking at where's my altitude. Here's my altitude. It does not have any marking of any type. It doesn't have an X, it doesn't have a variable, it doesn't have a number. So again, this is gonna be the leg theorem. It's called the leg theorem because I'm gonna use the leg twice. So in this case, my leg is X. It gets used twice. Then I need the entire hypotenuse, which in this case is nine, and then the part of the hypotenuse which is connected to the leg, which is this little part right here, five. Okay, again, use cross products. I get x squared equals 45. 45 is nine times five, nine is three times three. I have a pair of threes and a five left over. So x is three root five. I think that's the last example on this page, so let's flip the page. Okay, I'm gonna do one more with you, and then you're gonna do a few on your own. So example three, it says find the value of x in the figure below. So first thing, is it the altitude theorem or is it the leg theorem? Well, let's start by marking our altitude. Here is my altitude. In this case, my altitude this time has a number. So I'm gonna use the altitude theorem. Always start with the altitude theorem. If you can't use it, go to the leg theorem. Okay, so altitude theorem is called the altitude theorem because the altitude is the geometric mean. So that means nine is gonna be used twice. And then I need the two parts of my hypotenuse. This is the entire hypotenuse. So my two parts are six and X. So here's where we need to be careful. It's very tempting to choose the variable as your geometric mean. So to put X and X. But in this case, nine was the one that was used twice, not X. So you gotta think, what's my leg? What's my altitude? That's the one that's used twice. Uh, now I'm gonna do the cross products property. 9 multiplied by 9 is 81, so I have 81 equals 6x. Dividing both sides by 6, I get x is equal to 13.5, which is 27 over 2. Okay, example 4. This is a little bit different than what we were doing. It says, tell whether the triangle below is a right triangle. If so, find the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse. Right now, I would like you to pause the video and do this first part on your own. I want you to determine, is this a right triangle? This goes back to section two and the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So if you don't remember, look back at your notes. Again, pause the video, try this one on your own. Good luck. Okay, so let's see how we did. In order to determine if this is a right triangle, I need to see, does the Pythagorean theorem hold true? So is a squared plus b squared equal to c squared? c is our largest side, which is two root 89 in this case. So I have 10 squared, add 16 squared. I wanna know, is that equal to two root 89 squared? Sorry, that's a squared. 10 squared is 100, 16 squared is 256, two squared is four, 
root 89 squared is just 89. So I end up with 356 equals 356. So yes, this is a right triangle. Okay, so now the second part is the part that we're going to do together. It says find the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse. I'm going to put this as a right triangle. So I'll find the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse. I need to find this length right here. So there's an easy way to do this and a hard way to do this. So I'm going to show us the easy way. Hopefully we like that. We're going to use the concept of area. Area of a triangle is one half base times height. In this case, our base is 16 and our height is 10. So the area of our triangle is 80. Okay, so how does that help us? Well, I have to remember that my altitude also forms a right angle. So if I'm looking at this from a different way, this is the base of the triangle and this is the height. So now my base is 2 root 89 and my height is x. My area stays the same. Just because I re-express the height, the area can't change. So I have 80 equals 1 half and 2 cancel, so root 89x. So x is 80 divided by root 89, which is the same as about 8.5. So I know that was confusing. That was a little bit different than what we've been doing. Um, but you're going to need that for later on in today's video. Okay, example five. This is one for you to try. Um, find the value of x in the figure below. This is very similar to what we just did in example four. So you're going to have to express the area and then re-express the area. Good luck. Okay, so let's see how we did. I told you to find the area and then re-express it. So the base in this case is 4, the height is 3. So the area of my triangle is 6. Now I need to re-express the area. This time I'm going to look at the case where this is the base and this is the height. So my base is 5, my height is x, my area is still 6. 1 half multiplied by 5 is 2.5, so I have 6 equals 2.5x, so x is 6 divided by 2.5, which is 2.4. So I get x to be 2.4, which as a fraction is 12 over 5. So hopefully that one went well for you. If not, hopefully you see what mistake you made. Okay, so before we wrap up the video, I just want to know, did we accomplish the objective that we should have? We were going to calculate missing segment measures in right triangles with altitudes to the hypotenuse. So we were using the mean and the altitude theorem. You didn't get a chance to um, do them on your own. So we're going to do that now. So it says calculate, calculate the lengths of AC and BD in the figures below. So, if I want to find AC first, sorry, let me call this X. To find AC, you're either going to have to use the leg or the altitude theorem. Find that first. Then to find BD, you're also going to have to use the leg or the altitude theorem. So you're going to have to set up two proportions. As a clue, I'm going to tell you that you should get AC to be 7 and that should help you find BD. When you come tomorrow, I'm gonna to check to see that you have all the work for both AC and BD, and that you attempted both. Good luck.